Hello everybody, my name is Farmer Phil and today we're here with Father Phil. We are doing Vintage Thursday. We are going to look at our Massey Ferguson 35. 35. It's not a 35X. As the title says, the tractor has an identity problem. Or we thought it had anyways. So we're going to go through the history of the machine and we're going to run through everything about it. We'll talk about why it's a 35, not a 35X towards the end. But anyways, what's the history of this tractor? When did Grandad buy it? Your granddad bought this tractor, my father bought the tractor in 1876 out of a local garage, the Longford Arms. Had a the hotel. Yeah. Had the motorworks. So they had the uh, sold Massey Fergus. Yeah. And um, he would have bought the tractor in 1976. He traded in a car, a Woolsey uh, 1300. Again, it. Again, it with a bad gearbox. Yeah. Um, I would have got the tractor for handy money. Yeah. Would have been in uh, probably would have been in the hundreds, I'd imagine. I don't know exactly now. I, I can't find the receipt for it. Um, it was a UK import yeah. at that time. The same story with a lot of tractors, even today. The farmers in it, the wind is going to annoy you now. The farmers in Ireland worked off the, the UK imports. Um, that was sold originally in Canterbury. There's a, a, a name tag on the bonnet, and that's not the original bonnet. Supplied, supplied by Arthur Bros Limited, Barham, Barham. No, Barham North Canterbury. Canterbury. Phone number Barham 339. Um, I was very young when that tractor came. I was only six years of I wasn't even six years of age because that was bought in the springtime in 1976. Um, it used to have corner pieces here, so you couldn't get your hand to the fan. Oh, okay. But outside, was, yeah. And it had a downswept exhaust. Downswept. Yeah, down and under the runner board. Yeah. Same setup as it has today, and with mud guards and all that. Same as it is today, full line mud guards. <coughs> but it was used in the story that my father was told. It came out of a horticultural uh, farm. In Canterbury, yeah, um, that would have been working in greenhouses and places where you couldn't work with a, uh, an, an exhaust, exhaust. Yeah, but um, it wasn't long being changed here when to an up exhaust when it came because it would absolutely poison you. The exhaust fumes coming yes, in on you, coming in because it's so low, so low. Yeah, it, it just, the wind it will blow it in on top of you, it top. just like today. <laughs> um, it was. Uh, yeah, he had four of them. Four thirty-fives. Four. At that time, he would have had four Massey Ferguson thirty-fives. Um, he had two TVOs. TVO was still on the go. Yeah. And diesels. Now, there's a question someone asked: What was TVO? Well, TVO was tractor vaporizing oil. It was like paraffin. Yeah. It's the oil equivalent of paraffin. It can no longer be got. I think it, it finished up sometime in the late seventies. The TVO. Um, that one is a three cylinder. Uh -huh. Well, what, what's the current mix? Because people are mixing their own TVO. Yeah, what's a mix of? There is a, it, 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 the TVO had a distinct smell yeah. when it burned. And they do mix uh, petrol, heat and oil, kerosene. Kerosene. And uh, there's a small amount of castor oil goes into it as well yeah. to give it the distinct smell. But to get them to run right, you probably were better off running them just us on straight kerosene. Kerosene. Kerosene, when they're warm. Yeah. It, they, they, they would not start on TVO. Yeah, that's they, why they all had petrol tanks. That's all they had petrol tanks, because you had to start them off on petrol. Now we're talking about a TVO tractor and we're yeah. looking at a diesel. But, but anyway. anyways, we, I suppose we'll, we'll talk about the, that another day. We'll talk about that. We, we, yeah. we still have one of the original 35 TVOs. TVOs, yeah. Um, that one, uh, well, as it is, no cab, no nothing, that's just as she came. When did um, we, when, it had a cab on it? It had a cab, there was a cab put on it, maybe the following year, he bought a new Lamberton cab. Yeah. Uh, it was either late 75 or early 76, because in August 76 they got a rotary mower. Yeah. And it worked a 5 foot 6 class rotary mower, and he and the brother burned two exhausts off it. That year. That mowing. year, mowing. Mowing. But like it, it struggled to balance the tra the more. Never mind. But it would drive it no problem. Yeah. But uh, they got a one six five in in seventy seven, and that took the pressure off the the thirty fives. But they were doing all the work with thirty fives. Yeah. They had four of them. Um. 
the other one we had was a non-differential lock 35 it was an actual Longford tractor it was yeah. IX5006 was the registration number of it because I remember it well that one was a re-registered number so if you come to the back of it as someone pointed out, fix. Six, yeah, well that's the Longford, IX was the Longford number and F was the year letter. Yeah. Or when the, every, every thousand tractors the number rolled over, but it was basically a, a letter a year at that time. Yeah. Um, there would have been a pick a pitch on it, I remember that was a pick a pitch on it. It had a loader on it. It had a loader on it? Yes, there was a loader put on that for, oh, it could have been on it for 10 years. It was um, a yellow hydraulic loader. So that's not like the banana loader that come from no, the back of the tractor? No, it was a different crowd made the loaders. Yeah. Um, it was an old yellow loader with um, just the two, the, the frame went under the course of the limit over here. And there was a lad went onto the front bulkhead there and a stay rod went down here. And you had your, your loader frame, that done an awful lot of loading. Um, the loader eventually was taken off as things moved on. The tractor stayed, we had, the rest of our 35s were all sold traded in again different other tractors yeah that wind that was probably causing you lots of that's why i'm standing like this um it's um had two engine rebuilds while we had it yeah the first engine rebuild would have been in the 1980s and it's uh at that time the man that done the engine said it was an x it was a 35 x yes because of the way the engine was set up different fuel settings on the pump and the head was slightly different on a 35x i'm not sure about the, the piston stroke but he says that, that engine was definitely an x 35x yeah. engine the difference in the 35 and the 35x really was the engine yeah there's not no a whole, not lot, a whole no. lot heads it had the optional differential lock it came with that that was the first 35 we had with the differential lock, the, the, other diff lock had, yeah. the other diesel one we had had no differential lock um that tractor got into very bad repair for a long number of years the bonnet i think was off it for probably 10 to 15 years yeah it was a long time off it it was used as a yard scraper yeah this, this is the tractor i learned how to drive on i used to scrape the yards every saturday in low second and, you and time to rev it up yeah i used to just crawl around i just filmed myself traveling in low second there so you can have a look at just how fast i was traveling and i can remember one time saying i go for the high box i put in the high box and i was too afraid to go any faster so i put back into low second and oh, i continued scrapping the yards you never done any harm um, used to draw in all the bales off the tillage fields as well with it and spend the whole the whole autumn drawing in bales of straw with it this, um had a different engine for a short while. I had the engine of a 135. The engine that was in it, it's own, that's its original engine now. The original that's engine. The original engine, that engine was knackered. And we uh, took it out and I put in a uh, engine of a 135 into it. And we had it for scraping yards and not jobbing the boat. It, it just was kept, it just wasn't traded in. Um, the old cap was still on it. And in 2008, it was the 50th anniversary of the Massey name being found. Yeah, Massey Ferguson. And there was a big show in um Mount Bellio. No, no. A big show in uh, Minalty, that's it. A big Massey day in Minalty at the at the vintage show and I took a notion early in the year, do you know what now we go and we do up to thirty five. Well dear presses it cost an awful lot more than it did when it was new the first day. Yeah. There was a whole new bulk I had to be put into it. Yeah. A whole new front axle. We got the original engine rebuilt and put in um new mud wings new bonnet new brakes uh, we left no stone unturned or the uh, back end oil the, the back end oil wasn't changed because it wasn't an issue it didn't yeah. have to lift the, um, it was a brand new bonnet put on it at the time uh it's a reproduction bonnet uh to make it look right I had a rough idea where the old bonnet was dumped. Now, I mean, it was mangled. Yeah. There was no two bits of it straight. It was in an awful mess. And I went out, and luckily enough, the badge was the only bit of the bonnet that wasn't damaged. Yeah. And I took the badge off, and I put the badge back, back onto on. it. That's why we That's have that the badge. The original badge. They, they were the old brass badges that was behind the tractors when they came out. The steering wheel didn't even resemble a steering wheel. It was just steel. Yeah. There was not absolutely nothing left. In the original steering wheel. Yeah. I don't know how many thousand hours, of hours that yeah. tractor would have done. It's it's horrendous. It done all our work back in the seventies. He wouldn't have been using the, the TVOs that much. Because of the, the TVO. Because the TVO went to see the TVO was troublesome. Yeah. 
they were great when they were going and they were a disaster when they weren't and um, the 235s would have done an enormous amount of work too one of them was traded in in the, in the uh, mid 80s no early 80s for a 188 yeah and uh, that one just never was traded thankfully yeah we have it thankfully and now we are <laughs> back doing bits of work to it so as you've seen before we have our uh, well the beginnings of an automatic pickup hitch going on it we have hydraulic services now that's part of a tipping that's the original tipping that's the original tipping pipe. Pipe. pipe we have hydraulic services gone on it now uh we're just waiting for <laughs> That pin is out, that's going to have to be sorted. No, that's just those. Yeah, once, clip once a clip on it. So we have to wait for the bits to come from Agri Line just like, to finish just to the pickup hitch. The that done. Look at the PTO shaft. Look at how thin Deer wore down. Deer wore down. That takes a lot of work. Yeah. That tractor would have done a lot of belt work. Driving belt machines. Yeah. In the, off in the, a in, pulley. Off a pulley. In the winter time now, Back in the day, that one one of the thirty fives to be a, a um, pulley belt. Yeah. Stuck on it, and um, belt pulley put on it. In the, well, I suppose in in mid September, and it was stay on it the whole winter. If it wasn't sawn timber, it was working a, a, a crusher. Crusher. Crushing, crushing grain. Corn. Yeah. Crushing corn. Because like he, we done crushing here two two days a week, up until the mid to late eighties, and that was the roller that done it, and that yeah. that would have been the tractor. Was parked in the back street and it was the tractor was actually left outside so it didn't overheat yeah and the belt went through the shed to up, power to, the, up to the crusher that's how it was worked well the belt was very safe to see a way of driving something because if it's and oh. anything coming wrong the belt just slipped off slipped off yeah it wasn't uh, like putting it direct to the pto where there were spinning shafts and stuff well that was just a different yeah. way of driving things it was the old way of doing it yeah but um, no no that's it we've, we've lights to tidy up and now you have a couple of videos to do. Yeah, we've li li lights to go for it. I suppose just we'll explain why this is a 35 and not a 35X. With the first giveaway, we looked up the serial number and it's 292956 is the serial number. And the 35X has started at 30 something, they were in the 300 thousands. Yeah, but it would be. It was one of the last of the 35s. 35. It's as um, built to, uh, the date would be around 1962. Yeah, 1962. November yeah. to December 1962 by the serial number. Yeah. Also, some of the things people are pointing out is the dynamo and the dynamo bracket, how that is housed, is one of the ways to know. And I don't actually know how. And then some people are saying the diff lock makes it a 35X. But the last, of the, last of the 35s had an option of getting a diff lock where all 35Xs had the diff lock as standard. That's how that tractor would have come, whoever ordered there was that. No 35s multipower. Yeah, there was no 35s multipower. Only 35Xs came as multipower. Your granddad has won 35X multipower. 35X multipower, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's really it, isn't it? That's it's, really it. It's there. Someone <coughs> crashed the front of it. Yeah, I suppose might as well name and shame myself uh, uh during a tractor run i was following uncle ian on one of the nut fields and the, my foot slipped off the clutch when you come to park up and i run up him and broke the bottom my lovely new bonnet broke the bottom of it yeah anyways well, it's a working tractor that's yeah. what's important to us it's it's lovely to have vintage machinery it's lovely but the real pleasure in a vintage machine is getting out and doing something with it yeah even if it's only once a year for an hour. Yeah. Just making it use. This year we didn't get out our vintage combines. And it's a big regret we didn't, but it was just the year and the hand we were dealt. Yeah. It, it's, you know, it's, it's the whole enjoyment in the vintage machines. To park that in the shed and leave it there and stand around it once every six months and let it build up a dust, dust and a paint to it. Yeah. Now that was, that didn't use for a long time. Oh, a long time it says. It was for seven or eight years sitting in the shed because it was just parked and we didn't use it. But in the last few years we found it. It's nice, it's nice to get out yep. and help on a front uh, hour. Do use it quite, to be perfectly honest, we do use it quite a bit for running around with the finger bar more and the single disc spreader and doing odd jobs like that, oh, yard scraping. A lot of little jobs. Yeah, a lot of little jobs we've been using it for and it's very handy. When we get the automatic hitch, pick up hitch put on it, we'll be able to shunt trailers and stuff around the place with it. Like, yeah. it's only it's only going to get more news, use, not less. Well, and we're thinking, what about putting a foot throttle on it? Would never, I know, it wouldn't appeal to me at all. No, 
No, no a full throttle, no. no. That period tractor never had a full throttle. Never had. They never had a full throttle. No, no. The 135s was the first that came up with the full oh, throttle. Oh, okay. So the 35s never would have had a foot throttle. Bar yeah. your yeah, your 135 is foot throttle, but that was that was part of what well, made mine, it. Oh, doesn't what, have a foot throttle. But that's what made it a 135. Yeah, because it had a foot throttle. throttle. Yeah. Well, so the first 135s were really a 35x with a different bonnet. Yeah, wasn't the whole lot of difference. And that was the same with most things in Massey. The new model came out. You could get a 590. And then the 290. Yeah. Well, the 590, the first 590s was really a 188. Yeah. And the last of the 590s was a 290, or the 290 was the last of the 590s. Whatever just, way you want, look at it. Into, yeah. into the next, the next, the next tractor. Yeah. So, anyways, I think we will leave it at that for today's Vintage Thursday. So, you've seen this tractor lots. Now you know the history about it, and. It's very windy, so I hope you're able to hear me. I'm not going to point the camera at myself like I normally do because the wind is at me back. But if you want to decide what the next tractor we look at the choice of three. on the Vintage Thursday, head over to my Instagram story. I'll be putting up uh, options there that you're able to click on of three vintage tractors. We have 20 something vintage tractors. So if I do one a week, I have enough to get us into the middle of June and without buying any more. <laughs> Uh, but anyways there'll be three options there so head over there you'll be able to pick which, whichever vintage tractor you'd like to see next saturday or next thursday vintage next thursday so head over there to pick that and we will leave it at that for today's video so that is it from us please like and subscribe to the channel videos every tuesday thursday and sunday and now every thursday video will be a vintage thursday unless something else comes up but that is it from us any final remarks no, that's really it. Is. It's just there's a few things we need to do to it. Not sure of it. That's just our stuff. Yeah. Well, we might get them done. We might get them done. But it's it's quite usable. So anyways, that is it from us. Good luck. Good luck.